चरित पवित्र जीवन तथा पवित्रताय दिव्य नमो नम सल्यूटेशन टू होली मदर श्री शारदा देवी हूज लाइफ वॉज प्योर हूज कैरेक्टर वॉज प्योर वॉज प्यूरिटी इन कारनेट रिवेर स्वामी सर्वदेवानंद जी रिस्पेक्टेड नंस डियर डिवोटीज एंड फ्रेंड्स I am extremely happy to be here this evening. What a wonderful place! Beautiful place. One side mountain, another side the ocean, and here the greatest of all incarnations, Sri Ram Krishna, with Holy Mother Sharda Devi and Swami Vivekananda. I feel like just sitting and meditating and enjoying. <laughs> rather than speaking <laughs> but anyway i have been told to speak on the subject management of everyday life many people they do not understand the word management at the outset i would like to clarify management does not mean business management as pediatrics does not mean medicine business management is when aspect of management so peter drucker the great management guru of our present times who passed away recently of america the best of peter drucker is the name of the book which is let us book of peter drucker where he says from last 40 years we have been making this mistake of equating management with business management but earlier management meant the organized common sense the organized knowledge and experience that we have developed for bringing out a change in various aspects of life and business management was one of them but somehow the other last 40 years when we talk of management people simply say oh why you monks are talking about business management no management is a very vast term it is nothing but organized knowledge so what we are going to talk about is not business management how to make money how to invest how to get maximum profit what we are trying to discuss is about maximum profit out of our life management of everyday life now what is life life is a span between birth and death is it so no because after death there is another life read the book dr renault smoothie life after life i think it is in the bookstore your bookstore here is one of the best bookstores that i have seen though it is small one but contains beautiful books many books which i could not get anywhere are available here very good collection life after life by dr renault smoothie where they have experimented scientifically so far the theory of reincarnation was challenged by many many thinkers but now dr stevens brought out so many thousands of cases where they have remember the previous lives and dr renault smoothie has told in his book life after life is given documented various experiments there is life after life life does not cease at the time of death another life another life punarapi janamam punarapi maranam punarapi janani jathare shayanam ये संसारे बहु दुस्तारे कृपया पाहो पाही मुरारे भज गोविंद भज गोविंद से जादी शंकराचार्य अगेन वी आर बर्थ बॉर्न अगेन वी डाई अगेन वी आर रिबॉर्न अगेन डाई दिस होल सर्कल गोज ऑन टिल वी गेट द फाइनल इमेंसिपेशन सो अनलेस अनटिल वी नो व्हाट इज लाइफ वी विल नॉट बी एबल टू मैनेज लाइफ लाइफ इज नथिंग बट इज ओनली नॉट दिस दिस स्पैन ऑफ लाइफ बट वी सी इट्स is a life of many many births it is beginningless but it has an end culminating in infinite happiness infinite bliss and eternal life that is the preaching of vedanta and in fact we are all in search of that infinite peace and happiness but we do not know that and that is why 
we are said going mad after so many pleasures and going mad after making money so many places you see all the people running mad after so many sensual pleasures and also consumerism affluenza why because they do not know the purpose of life i remember a zen story a horse was galloping at full speed and somebody asked the person where are you going he said ask the horse <laughs> <laughs> but i am not leading the horse horse is leading me we are not leading the life life is leading us like a flock of sheep everybody is going mad after money we are also going after mad after money everybody goes an equation h is directly proportional to m where h is equal to happiness and m is equal to money <laughs> and so mad after career development and money and consumerism going for collecting goods but what is the purpose of life why we are born as a human being we have a purpose in life as a human being we are different from other animals this is the first thing we have, must remember ours is a human birth ours is a human life so how are we different from the other species ahar nidra bhay maitunancha samana metat pashu bhin naranam धर्मो ही तेषा अधिको विशेष धर्मेण हिना पशु भी समाना फोर थिंग्स आर कॉमन बिटवीन एनिमल्स एंड मैन वॉट आर दे आहार दे ऑल्सो ईट वी ऑल्सो ईट निद्रा दे ऑल्सो स्लीप वी ऑल्सो स्लीप भय दे आर ऑल्सो फ्रेड वी आर ऑल्सो फ्रेड मैं तो नमच दे ऑल्सो रिप्रोड्यूस रिक्रिएट क्रिएट वी ऑल्सो क्रिएट प्रो क्रिएट देन वॉट इज द डिफरेंस डिफरेंस इज इन स्पिरिचुअलिटी the animals do not have that wisdom called power of discrimination that is why einstein says in his book the world as a seed the true value of a human being is determined primarily by the measure and the sense in which he has attained to liberation from the self that is the purpose of life the true value of a human being is determined primarily by the measure and the sense in which he has attained to liberation from the self that is why dr lincoln barnett says in his book einstein and the new and the universe that is the name of the book where he says man has a unique capacity of transcending himself and perceiving himself in the act of perception man has a unique capacity of perceiving himself and of transcending himself and perceiving himself in the act of perception neil bohr the nobel prize physicist says man is actor and spectator in this great drama of life simultaneously we are actors we are all actors but we are also our spectators which is not true with the other species they can be only actors they are acting we are also acting but we can be actors and spectators simultaneously that is a special prerogative of human nature and we can transcend all the limitations of our nature that is why abraham Mas maslow one of the greatest psychologists of our time says in his book the father riches of human nature says not only self actualization so far he was talking only about self actualization but now he really he acknowledges yes the true purpose of life is self transcendence not only self actualization so we have to transcend the limitations of true nature and now the modern science has proved beyond doubt if we really want success happiness peace real life if we want to really manage our life properly for managing our everyday life iq is not enough so far we are thinking higher iq will give us makes more of success in our and we will be able to manage our life properly no eq is more important than iq 1991 daniel goleman made a research and said that eq emotional intelligence is more important than iq and now the latest discovery of the modern science is sq spiritual intelligence Dana Zohar writes in her book SQ spiritual intelligence the ultimate intelligence where she says neurologically physiologically biologically psychologically from every point of view there is a concluding evidence there is something called SQ which is the basis of both IQ and EQ 
what is iq iq will tell you how to play the game of life what is eq eq will tell you how to play the game of life under change circumstances with change strategies what is sq sq will tell you whether to play the game of life at all or not well that is your choice what is the purpose of life what is the meaning of life why were we here where do we want to go after death all these things will be decided by sq so development of iq eq and sq all the three if we can achieve then only we have managed our life properly so and how to do that how to develop sq it is here that the western modern science has no answer they have told they have tried to find out various measures how to develop how to measure sq they have also developed certain models they have also given some formulas but here we have in vedanta a much more ready answer and much more relevant answer and the whole gist of vedanta has been given by swami vivekananda in his book on raj yoga where he says each soul is potentially divine the goal of human life is to manifest this divinity within by controlling nature external and internal do this either by work worship psychic control or philosophy by one or more or all of these and be free this is the whole of religion dogmas rituals worships temples churches mosques are but secondary details the goal of human life is to manifest the divinity within there is a divine spark inside each and every human being irrespective of caste creed color religion nationality एष सर्वेशु भूतेशु गुणो आत्मा न प्रकाशते दृश्यते तग्रया बुद्ध्या सूक्ष्मया सूक्ष्मदर्शिभि इज दैट एवरी ह्यूमन बीइंग इज द सेंटर ऑफ कॉन्शियसनेस कल आत्मन इट इज देयर बट इज नॉट विजिबल देन व्हाट इज द प्रूफ सम पीपल हैव सीन इट दोस हु हैव गॉट स्पेशल टाइप ऑफ इंटेलिजेंस व्हाट इज दैट स्पिरिचुअल इंटेलिजेंस दोस हैव गॉट स्पिरिचुअल इंटेलिजेंस एसक्यू दे हैव रियलाइज्ड दिस आत्मन so that is already there but at present we are unaware about it because there is a screen hiding the reality we are all in search of peace everybody is in search of peace uh, only thing that we are searching at a wrong place an old woman was searching for a needle which she lost and then somebody asked for after a long search she was not able to get it then she was asked where did the needle fall inside the room and you are searching here there is no light there <laughs> we are searching at the wrong place how do we get peace of mind we are all in search of peace of mind but we are searching at the wrong place the source of infinite joy infinite happiness is within inside every human being and we are searching outside that is why kabir says there is a bit the poet kabir says moko kahan tu dhunde bande mai to tere paas mein khojoge to abhi milunga pal bhar ki talash mein where are you searching for me i am within you in within a moment's notice i'll you can get me but i am inside you nityo nityanam chetanas chetananam eko bahu naam yo vidhati kaman tam atmastham yenu pashyanti dhira tesham shanti shashvati netaresham nityo nityanam there is an eternal soul inside that there is eternal soul there is the eternal parmatman eternal supreme soul and chetanas chetanam chetananam within our consciousness there is super consciousness residing which is controlling the whole universe and tam atmastham yenu pashyanti dhira those who can realize this supreme self within the self individual self those who have realized this they alone can have infinite happiness infinite bliss none else none else yo vai bhuma tat sukham nal pe sukham asti so if we really want if you really want happiness if we really want success if you really want peace if you want to manage our life properly the first thing we must remember what is the purpose of life we have lost the purpose of life meaning of life that is our great tragedy and paradox that we do not know swami vireshwaran ji the 10th president of our ramkrishna order used to give a beautiful story a Jap- story of a japanese boy a japanese boy was working in a 
in a house as a maid as a as a servant boy and the master of the house was away so the mistress told the boy that your master has gone away it is already two two days since he is gone and it will he will return only after two days so we'll have to have certain items now can you purchase few items going to the nearby town now he had never gone to the town he said okay i can try then he was given some money given direction how to reach that town place the town by which bus to take and all that and the boy went with the money now he had never been to the town when he came to the town he saw so many new things so many beautiful fancy stores so many clothes so many sweet shops and then he came to an exhibition which was going on and there there was a fairy wheel so he sat down on the fairy wheel and there was a magic show going on he went for that and there were so many other shops so he took some eatables like that he was enjoying suddenly there was an announcement it this is the last bus going to the village ha huh? last bus immediately he jumped into the bus and then came to the place and the mistress was sitting just standing on the door why is you are so late he had no answer to give and said why is you late i said oh i was lost in seeing all the things i never saw such things so i forgot that is already evening morning he had gone it is already evening okay where are the items items oh i forgot ha huh? why did you go for purchasing the items that purpose was lost because he was so much engrossed in seeing the play things and toys similarly we come and we are so much engrossed in the play things and toys we forget the basic purpose of life aaya tha kis kaam se tu soya chadar tan kar samay hua ab jaag gafil apna aap pehchan re for what purpose you came you forgotten purpose now get up uttishtha jagrata prapya vara nibodhata that is what kathopanishad says and swami vivekan gave a free translation arise awake and stop not till the goal is reached the goal is to get infinite happiness and peace and eternal life and how to get it by combining four yogas raj yoga bhakti yoga gyan yoga and karma yoga all the yogas are independently capable of achieving the goal then swami vivekan was asked what would you recommend for us he said you take up whatever you want what you have taken up swami vivekan says i ride on all the four horses simultaneously <laughs> romarola says swami vivekan rode on all the four horses simultaneously all the four yogas then he said best is to combine all the four yogas of course the emphasis may differ may differ depending on your individual tendency of mind your individual choice you may give more emphasis to gyan yoga but also mix all the three other yogas also you may be you may follow bhakti yoga primarily but also combine all the other three yogas also why why and swami vivekan personality was a integral personality all the four yogas were combined look at the life of holy mother sharada devi all the four yogas combined in fact when swami vivekanand was in america at that time he was just preparing a pamphlet for an announcement so there was the he wanted to give an emblem now so he wanted to design the emblem of ramkrishna order he was sitting on the breakfast table immediately got a piece of paper and drew a picture and told the artist to prepare the emblem based on that that is the registered symbol of ramkrishna mission our organization which has got 173 branch centers all over the world that emblem may not be here but in all our books you will get is here no in our books you will get everywhere in our pamphlets you will get the emblem there is a serpent there is the swan there is the sun there are waves of water there is a lotus what does it signify swami vivekananda said the emblem should be such that it will reveal the basic philosophy and ideology of the whole organization at one stage at straight you get the philosophy what is that the the encircled serpent represents the kundalini shakti the kundalini shakti moves from muladhar to sahasrar that means 
this do the the in the coiled serpent represents raj yoga lotus represents love religion of love bhakti yoga sun represents knowledge that is gyan yoga and waves of water are the waves of karma is karma yoga and inside that is the swan and it is written on the below, on below that figure tanno hansa prachodayat this is how the supreme self is realized how by combining karma yoga bhakti yoga gyan yoga and raj yoga you get hansa is equal to paramansa is equal to the supreme divine so he said combine all the four yogas that is best you may emphasize on one yoga or two or, or another yoga as per your choice but better is to combine all the four yogas why you know modern management theory says if you really want to have maximum profit maximum productivity you must utilize all your resources <laughs> similarly if we want to manage our life properly then we must utilize all our faculties now we have hands to work why not work for the lord that is karma yoga we have got a mind all of us have got a mind then let us meditate with that mind on the divine that is raj yoga and all of us have got the brain the intellect with which we can think about what is real what is unreal what is temporary what is permanent what is power with the power of discrimination that is gyan yoga and all of us have got a heart we want to receive love and we want to give love i asked the youngsters how much love you want 5 kg or 10 kg no 10 kg 10 kg or 100 kg 100 kg how much you will receive when you say no we want unlimited love and swami vivekananda says we cannot be satisfied without unlimited love but he also says in his book religion of love there cannot be an infinite love an immortal love between two finite realities going towards death changing all the time and their moods also changing all the time you cannot have so there can be an infinite and immortal love between an immortal soul immortal atman and immortal parmatman whatever it is so combine all the four yogas maximum utilization of all our resources that is the language of man- modern management second when we combine all the four yogas we get the benefits of all yogas multiplied and we also remove the disadvantages of various yogas now yogas in the, by themselves are not harm, harmful but because of our inefficiency our deficiency sometimes we get some negative effect of this yoga for example some people they want to go for the royal royal path raj yoga and they are so enthusiastic about it they just learn pranayama and breath exercise breathing exercise and they try to get some miracles and afterwards they become over enthusiastic though swami vivekananda has written in his book on raj yoga that raj yoga should be practiced under the guidance of a personal guide but they are so impatient they start doing all sorts of exercises and afterwards as has been told swami ji that if you do not have like that there is a danger that you may end up in a mental hospital <laughs> and this is what happens many people come to us swami ji his kundalini has gone up now it is not coming down who told him to push push the kundalini up now it is not coming down this is these are the things happening why because over and over we want to meditate for 24 hours of course meditation is very good start with 5 minutes 10 minutes half an hour one hour gradually increase and 24 hours meditation very few people can do then what to do you mix it with karma yoga try to do good to humanity when you serve others what happens your heart gets purified at the same time law of giving says when you give you return you get get 10 times more back so if you combine it with karma yoga the danger of going into mental hospital will be reduced similarly when you go for karma yoga what happens when you go for karma yoga you get so much achievements then you become egoistic oh i have done so much of work but if you combine it with raj yoga that is meditation during meditation you will come you will be able to understand no 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 i am not the doer i am only an instrument 
So that meditation will balance, this balancing of work and meditation will come by combining these two yogas. Similarly, Gyan Yoga is the shortest cut to very short path. Very short cut. Some, some people want to take short cut when they go to mountains, very tall, very big mountains. Then they want to take short cut and that becomes a long cut. <laughs> they fall down 10,000 feet below. It's a slippery path. Slow. Gyan Yoga is a short cut but dangerous. Shurasthidhara, Nishita, Duratya, Durgam Patas Tatkavya Vodanti says the Kathopanishad, like walking on the edge of a rose, razor is the difficult path. That is Gyan Yoga. But it is short. But it is dangerous. Mix it with Bhakti Yoga. And Gyan Yoga is dry. Bhakti Yoga is very easy. It's for all. It's a religion of love. Very sweet. Very palatable. Mix a little Bhakti Yoga with Gyan Yoga. So Gyan Yoga's dryness also will go. And at the same time, this Bhakti Yoga will make it sweetened. At the same time, Bhakti Yoga, though it is very good, and it is very natural for all of us. At the same time, there is a danger of becoming too much emotional. So Swamiji says, mix Gyan Yoga with that, then these emotions will get rationalized. So, we will not become so sentimental nonsense. So combine Gyan Yoga and Bhakti Yoga. Similarly, when we combine all the four Yogas, we get the advantages of all the four Yogas minus their disadvantages. So that is why, Combining all the four yogas in our daily life, we can get happiness and peace. And we can achieve the real purpose of life. We have forgotten the real purpose of life. That is our tragedy. And we are going mad after consumerism. And that is why most of us, most of the people have got lack of peace of mind. They are under tension. A fisherman was uh, sleeping in his boat by the side of a seashore, Mexican seashore. <laughs> it was afternoon. And by the seashore was sitting a professor of Harvard who had done his MBA from Harvard. So he told, he, he just woke him up and said, Hey, why are you not fishing? It is still afternoon. Then while sleeping he said, You see what happened? Right in the early morning I got a very big catch. Very big fish. So I sold it and I got a good money. And that is good enough for meeting my expenditure up for today. So my quota is over and so I am relaxing. What? Is there any quota system here? You must earn more and more and get more money. But what will I do with that more money? Why? You deposit. Now he had never heard about any deposit. Deposit? Yes. Deposit the money and make the deposit more and more. Then when he got more deposit... Then purchase a bigger boat. <laughs> then you will be able to do deeper into the ocean. And you will get much better fishes, much longer, much bigger fishes. And then you will get more money. What to do with that money? Again deposit. <laughs> then you go on multiplying your boats. Then you say, I am an MBA from Harvard. And so then, I will t then you will become a CEO of a very big company. Having so many fleets. Then they go on earning money and go on depositing. Then what? When you have got a lot of deposit... Then you come to me, I have got the investment policies of all the companies. I will tell you where to invest, how to invest. And when you invest your money like that, then you take retirement from the business and then make investment in these companies, in this make investment, then you will get a fixed rate of return. And it will come to you every month and you will be able to sleep nicely. I was sleeping nicely, it is you who woke me up. <laughs> What a roundabout process. Losing half of our life, losing health. First half of life, people lose their, their health for earning money. Rest half of the life, losing money for regaining the health. <laughs> that is the tragedy. Then you got blood pressure and BP and high blood pressure and by this heart problem. All these problems... Whatever money you earn goes to the doctors. <laughs> anyway, they also need they also need to survive. Good. <laughs> it's a all a vicious circle. We are surviving. The lawyers are also wanted. That where they will go. So you must have lawsuits. <laughs> so it's a very vicious circle. Consumeristic society. 
we have lost the purpose of life let us sit down and know the purpose of life is to get that eternal happiness the purpose of life is no go mad after that and this equation h is directly proportional to m does not exist the modern economists and sociologists and have told the happiness curve happiness goes on increasing as you go on getting more money till a certain period but after a certain period happiness goes down as the more you earn the more the unhappiness this is what they have discovered and that is why london that is uh, world economic forum they had a survey which is the happiest country in the world do you know which is the happiest country according to that survey the happiest country is bangladesh <laughs> having minimum per capita income and india was fifth and usa 45th with so much of per capita income high why because happiness survey so now they are not going on for gnp gross national product they are going for gnh gross national happiness <laughs> yeah and bhutan has shown the way bhutan that small country has shown the way that the real measure of measure of measure, the real test of measuring the progress of a country should not be gnp but it should be gnh happiness are you happy with all that money per capita income are you happy are you having peace of mind no then what use is your money what is the purpose of life so here vedanta comes to where he says combine all the four yogas in daily life and then you will have happiness and peace and success develop sq by combination of all the four yogas and then you will have happiness and peace that that eternal source of happiness and joy and peace is already there but we have to manifest it and this manifestation can be done while working we don't have to go to forest for or we don't have to retire whatever work we are doing we are wherever we are just by changing the attitude of mind we can achieve that supreme excellence we can achieve the purpose of life so that is how it will come by converting work into worship that is why shri krishna says in the bhagavad gita buddhi yukto jahati ha ubhe sukrut duskrute tasmat yoga ya yujjasva yoga karmasu kaushalam what is yoga dexterity in action efficiency in action and that will come when there is we have got a, an equanimity of mind samattvam yoga uchyate when we have equanimity of mind so then karmani vadhikaraste ma phaleshu kadachana ma karma phale turbhu ma te sangost akarmani arjun shri krishna says tell told arjuna that you do the work but don't get attached to the fruits of action do your work with unattachment with the spirit of detachment and really you will get much more than what you desire but don't go for desiring the result result will come of itself because the law of karma is supreme in the mental world as law of gravitation is supreme in the physical world as you saw so you reap if you plant a tamarind tree you will get tamarind if you plant a mango tree you will get mango mango that is the law of as you saw so you reap if you do a good action you will get good result if you do bad action you will get bad result some people say we don't believe in the law of gravitation but some people they say we don't believe in the law of karma whether you believe it or not the law of karma will act <laughs> this is lighthouse principle seven habits of highly effective people is a beautiful book by stephen covey now the eighth habit has also come in another book there gives the example a sheep is going and from the other side there is a light that is seen and the captain is told there is a light seen there may be another sheep is coming so the captain gives the signal over wireless please move your ship by 20 degrees otherwise it will collide and the signal comes from via on wireless from the other side message comes you please move your ship now the captain got very much annoyed i am the captain of the ship commanding you to move your ship who is at the other end and the message came sir i am a humble operator of the lighthouse <laughs> <laughs> if you don't want to change direction i don't mind <laughs> i am in the lighthouse so these are all lighthouse principle whether you believe it or not the law will act whether you believe it in the law of karma or not it will act whether you believe in or not 
law of gravitational act. You say, I don't believe in the law of gravitation. Go to the, here there is no multi-story building. You'll have to go to Hollywood. <laughs> it's very good, no multi-story building. Go to a multi-story building, go to the top floor and announce, I don't believe in the law of gravitation, then jump. <laughs> what will happen? Your photograph will be published in newspaper. <laughs> This fellow did not believe in the law of gravitation and still the law of gravitation worked and fell down unconscious and died on the spot. So whether we believe it or not, the law of gravitation will act. These are all lighthouse principles. Similarly, law of karma is supreme. It will act whether you believe it or not. As you saw, so you reap. That's why Swami Vivekan says the law of giving. At long last you will find out that the best way to become happy is to see that others are happy and the best way to get peace of mind is to pray for others' peace of mind. Make an experiment. I tell many people, what Swamiji says, when you start your spiritual practices, in the beginning, just pray for all. We have a beautiful prayer in India. Sarve bhavantu sukhina, sarve santu niramaya, sarve bhadrani pashyantu, ma kashchit dukham apnuyat. Let all be happy. Let all be happy. Let all attain good. Let none become miserable. Send the waves of this goodness all over the world. You will find after few, after some time that if you are praying for others, they will get peace of mind, of course. But first you will get peace of mind. Make an experiment. But some people say, no, we have made experiment, we have failed. Then I tell them, you are, maybe you are not praying well. Some people, they pray, Oh Lord, let all be happy, minus my husband. <laughs> they put a bracket there. Don't put a bracket there. Let all be happy, minus my wife. <laughs> yes, there are many people, they put a bracket. Everybody, they say, everybody I can forgive, but not my husband. No, I cannot forgive. <laughs> so, in the time of prayer, forget about all the differences. Let all be happy. Let all be healthy. Let all attain good. Let none become miserable. If we can really pray like that, Swami Vivekananda says, we will get the result. And then he says, the law of giving is supreme. The more you give, the more comes back to you. Not with simple interest, with compound interest. Yes, it comes. We have seen many times. And that is why Swami Vivekananda gave a beautiful message to the, to the prince of Mysore. My dear prince, this life is short. The vanities of this world are transient. In this short life, they alone live, who live for others. The rest are more dead than alive. Management of everyday life means learning the art of living, living for others, living with happiness and peace, living with a purpose for the supreme goal, getting happiness and peace in everyday life by combining four, the, all the four yogas and also getting supreme supreme divine life supreme divine eternal life and supreme joy eternal life eternal happiness eternal peace that is what we want so and in the management of life there are so many other chapters but there is no time but i will just touch management of time i talked about it uh, to, on yesterday itself Yesterday I talked about it in our Hollywood center, but I just give a hint because I can't repeat, there's no time. But there I had told that time is always flying. Time and trade wait for none. Supreme importance of time. Time management is very important. Now when we talk about time management, essentially it's nothing but setting up the priorities of life. What do we want to achieve in life? We decide and then budget. Budget the time. And then you try to analyze how much time is being wasted. Reduce the vestiges. Eliminate the unnecessary activities. And bite as much as you can chew. Whatever work is not, is you divide the work into essential, less essential, non-essential. Eliminate non-essential. And try to first give priority to the essential. And then if time is left, go to the non-essential non-essential activities, less essential activities. Like that, we have to manage our time. And 86,400 seconds are deposited in your everybody's account in the morning. Whatever seconds you make use of are yours. Rest, gone west. 
Next day, again morning, you will be deposited with 83,400 seconds. But those seconds are gone. That is time deposit. 24 hours, everybody gets. None gets more, none gets less. Abraham Lincoln also got 24 hours. Swami Vivekan also got 24 hours. Obama also gets 24 hours. Within that, he has to manage time within which we have to manage our time. So within 86,400 seconds, let us try to know what is the purpose of life and try to utilize that time for our that purpose. And trying to utilize the time to the best possible manner. And there is a beautiful saying in Hindi, Kaal kare so aaj kar, aaj kare so ab, palma parle hoegi, bahuri kare go kab. Whatever we want to do it tomorrow, you do it today. Whatever you want to do today, do it now. Because who knows when you will die. Death, the most certain thing in the whole world is death. And the most uncertain thing is the time of death. <laughs> That's it. That's a reality. Any time I am speaking, just now I may die. Heart attack, <laughs> gone. <laughs> that would be wonderful death. But of course, I don't want to put these nuns into difficulties. <laughs> Better I die at Hollywood Center. <laughs> anyway, anybody can die any moment. It may come any time. So, whatever you want to do it tomorrow, you do it today. Whatever you want to achieve, it is. And beautifully, it has been told, yesterday is a cancelled check. Yesterday is a cancelled check and tomorrow is a promissory note and today is the ready cash. Utilize this cash. Utilize this cash for the best. Present. Let us live in the present. Tomorrow is a promissory note and promissory note may or may not work. We do not know. Next moment will not be there. May not be there. And yesterday is a cancelled check. Forget and forgive whatever has happened. Let the date pass but it's dead. Now let us start. And let us make the best utilize of our time. Now we come to management of mind, most important. So far, the, all the people were talking about management of 4M. Management of materials, management of money, management of manpower, and management of machines. Management of machines is production planning and control. Management of materials is materials management. Management of money is financial management. Management of man is Personal management, what they are now called human resource development, HRD. But now the fifth M is very, very become very important. That is the management of mind. Even in the corporate sector, they are thinking the management of mind is very important because most of the executive officers are having stress problem. They are having tremendous tension, stress problem. And management of mind is also important because Emerson says the secret of success in trade, in war, in every management of human affairs is the concentration of mind. If we want concentration of mind, we have to manage mind. If we want to control our anger, we have to management of mind. If we want to control our stress level, we have to management of mind. So management of mind is very important. When it comes to management of mind, we feel we are miserable. We don't have control over mind. But don't, don't worry. We are traveling in the same boat with Arjuna. Arjuna told Sri Krishna, Chanchalami mana Krishna pramati balavadridam tasyaham nigraham manne vayoriva sudhuskaram. Oh Lord, you told me how to meditate and all that about control of mind and everything. I have listened to that. Wonderful things you have told. But, you know, <laughs> always we have a but. So Arjuna also had a but. Nividita, sister Nividita had always a but. Swamiji will give converse lectures, this and that. Then Nividita will... Sister Nevidita, Miss Margaret Noble, who later on became dedicated her whole life for the sake of his Indian work. So later on he became, the, her name was given as Nivedita, the dedicated one. So when Swamiji was in London, after the lecture, after every lecture, Nivedita would, Sister Nevidita would get up, Miss Margaret Noble. Swamiji, what you told is right, but, <laughs> they always tell me, but, she will have a lot of questions. Arjuna also said, but, like us, but, I find my mind is so restless. I find it very difficult to control. More difficult to control than controlling the wind in my fist. You know how difficult to control the fist. Control the wind in the fist. More difficult I find. This is a graphic description Arjuna is telling. He is our representative. Asking Sri Krishna. And Sri Krishna, he did not admonish him. 
In the second chapter, when Arjuna said that no, I can't, I can't fight. I find it very difficult. This and that. Then Sri Krishna roared. What? Talking like a fool. Talking like a coward. Kutaswa kashmala midam vishme samupastitam anaryam ajustam aswargam artikar akirte karam Arjuna. Klebem mas magam ha partha. Nay tatte yupa padate. Shudram radya dorvalyam takto tisha parato. Get up. Give up this faint-heartedness. This does not befit thee. You are a coward. Give up this cowardice. But when Arjuna said, Oh, Lord, I find this mind very difficult to control. Sri Krishna did not say, What? Talking like a fool, coward? No. What did he say? Asanshayam mahabaho. Manor dur nigraham chalam. Yes, Arjun, you are very right. This mind is very difficult to control. Sri Krishna says, Mind is very difficult to control. You see? Sri Krishna also agrees. Mind is very difficult to control. Swami Vivekananda says in his book on Raj Yoga, this mind is very difficult to control. He gives the example. You know, mind is like a monkey. You have seen the monkey. Monkey cannot sit down for something. Always jumping. There was a monkey, all restless by nature, it was jumping. Now somebody made it to drink some wine. Now it started jumping more. And then a scorpion stung it. So still more jumping. And then a ghost entered into his head. Now you can see the jumping of that that monkey. Similarly, he says, Swamiji says, our mind is like a monkey, always restless. And then day and night we are drinking the wine of desire. I will have this Mercedes Benz car. I will have this type of house. I will have this type of dresses. I want to have a gown of $20,000. I want to have this one. And drinking, drinking, drinking the wine of desire. And then scorpion's tongues. What is that scorpion? Jealousy. Huh? He has already surpassed me. Ah, let me see how he surpasses me. Then, the ghost enters, ghost of ego, enters into the head. Don't you know who am I? I am police officer. I will see to it that you are in the jail. Don't you know who am I? What I can do to you? I am so and so. I am a big officer. So that ego enters. Then our mind becomes very restless. So Swami Vivekananda says, very difficult to control the mind. Sri Krishna says, very difficult to control the mind. Buddha says, it is more difficult to control the mind than to control, than to fight with one lakh people, with one million people, single-handed. Hundred thousand people. It is easier to fight single-handed with hundred thousand people than to control the mind. Buddha says, very difficult to control the mind. Sri Krishna says, very difficult. Swami Vivekananda says, very difficult. All the great people, they say, very difficult to control the mind. And the modern guru says, oh, very easy. Just give me $35, you will get instant samadhi. <laughs> it's an age of instant. Instant coffee, instant success, instant samadhi. Everything they want instant. So this is the modern gurus. But Sri Krishna says, no, very difficult. But second sentence is very important for us. Ashanshe Mahabaho Manodur Nigram Chalam. Oh, Arjuna, don't worry. I, I agree with you. There is no doubt about it that this mind is very difficult to control. So that gives us hope. Yes, <laughs> we are traveling in the same. Many people, they come to me and then say, Swamiji, I want to share a secret with you. Yes, yes, you can share the secret of your life. You know, when I start meditating, my mind wanders here and there and all types of thoughts come to me. I said, this is the secret which everybody reveals to me. It's no more secret. It's open secret. <laughs> everybody has the problem. We are all traveling in the same boat. Don't worry. We are traveling with Arjuna. Sri Krishna says, there is no doubt that our mind is very difficult to control. But, But it is possible to control the mind. How? By two methods. Abhyas, constant practice, and second, Vairagya, by the spirit of detachment. We have to do practice again and again, whether our mind likes or not. Just as when you sit on the horse, the horse just kicks you out. Again you sit. Gradually you start sitting. And then, then you start standing on the horse. And then you start standing on the horse with one leg. And then when even the horse is running all around, then also you are standing with her. Not only that, Sri Ramakrishna went for a circus and he saw that an English woman was standing with one foot on the horse and the horse was running all around and then there was a ring and from above the ring, the, the from under the ring, the horse went and the English woman jumped and went again and sat down again on the horse. 
what a difficult task but with practice it was possible many times she fell in the beginning but it was possible so sri ramkrishna says practice 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 makes a man perfect when we meditate we try to meditate when we try to control mind again it becomes difficult again we try so we have to go on trying and it is better to have a fixed time for meditation then it helps so our settling time down comes down so have a fixed routine practice at regular time then it becomes easier and regularity is a great help regularity and punctuality is a great help in achieving success in our meditation or in controlling the mind second thing but only practice will not be enough second thing is important spirit of detachment four drunkards got together on a full moonlight and they thought let us have a picnic so it was a moonlight so they boarded the boat and they started rowing the boat and it was a full moonlight and they were started rowing afterwards one person got majid was tired so the second person started rowing the boat likewise turn by turn all the people rowed 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 whole night they rowed now in the morning the day break there was a bright sunshine and their intoxication came down so they were little half awake then they started asking oh my god we are so tired whole night we have rowed let us see how far we have come oh there is some bank that has come let us see how far we have come then they went to the shore and they found out they were standing at the same place from where they had started <laughs> what happened we rowed the whole night but we forgot to lift the anchor so if we do not if we do not leave the anchor of attachment and go on doing practice 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 we will not be able to control the mind abhyasenu to kaunteya vairagine che grihyate both the things have to be done we have to row the boat at the same time we have to lift the anchor so that is a little bit about uh, the management of i am just giving you now a very cursory glance it all the various subheadings that i am giving you each and every subject requires lot of many hours but i am trying to condense for you and now time is coming to an end now management of relationships very important in our daily life management of relationships is very important so uh, there is my book happiness and peace in everyday life and along with that there is another book nurturing relationship the art of sharing and caring i just give a gist of that but you must read that book unfortunately i don't have the sufficient copies but it is in pdf form available in my website rkmvm.com/sn so you download it and you go through that you will get much more details that book happiness and peace plus nurturing relationship now nurturing relationship is like nurturing a plant so if you want to have a nice plant beautiful plants all around first thing you require is a good soil so mind should be good nature of a person is full if if a person's nature is good he or she will be able to develop good relationship so the soil has to be good second a very good sapling if you now if you now give then what happens you have also to have a guard guarding is necessary otherwise animals will eat away the plant so guarding is necessary that is called disciplining the mind so we have to have certain disciplining of the mind that is not enough sometimes what happens that the weeds come so we have to weed out the plant similarly when we are growing in relationship jealousy comes so many other things come we need to remove that by prayer then manure is very much required manure manure will come by humility is the greatest manure will help us to grow our relationship better but most important thing of course is you know for a plant most important thing is water yes without water the plant cannot grow now in porbandar as a part of earthquake rehabilitation project we had undertaken a project for 20 crores of rupees we constructed 81 school buildings all over gujarat they were all school buildings and we handed over the buildings to the government and also constructed six colonies so out of which 37 school buildings and three colonies we constructed in porbandar district when i was in porbandar now 
when we constructed the colony we wanted, we had given beautiful houses to the all the people who had lost their houses. We wanted that colony should be an ideal colony. So there should be sufficient trees. It will look nice. And they will have this a good environment. So we planted many trees. And we gave a lot of water. And yet all the plants died. Why? Because you know, poor Bandar is very near the ocean. If you fit five feet deep, seven feet deep, there is a lot of water, but it is all saltish water. <laughs> so we had to then make special arrangement of bringing sweet water through a tap. And then we provided sweet water, then all the trees grew up. So, the most important thing to nurture relationship is love. But it should be not saltish love, not selfish love. It should be unselfish love. Most of the time, our relationships are broken. Why? Because of saltish love, saltish water, selfish love. So, let us say goodbye. So, if you really want to have a relation, good relationship between husband and wife, between mother-in-law, daughter-in-law, parents and children, with neighbors, anywhere, this is the, these are the certain principles. And then, fundamental principles I have told, A, accept, assess and adjust. I am giving just formulas, you think it over afterwards, you will get that. A, accept, first of all, assess, accept, yes. You have to accept certain, every, nobody is perfect in the husband. The wife has to see the good plus points of, uh, the husband has to see the good plus points of wife. There are so many minus points, but there are some plus points. You try to see that and adjust. <laughs> Maybe one or two. Similarly, wife has to see one or two good points in husband and forget. Children. There are so many things they are saying. Yes, parents, they have certain good qualities. Try to see. The parents also try to see some of the good qualities. They have positive thinking. So try to adjust, accept, and then after assessment. B is behavior. Behavior, uh, Mahatma Gandhi used to keep three monkeys. You know, you might have heard about those three monkeys. One monkey with both the eyes closed. I, th I saw some these three monkeys somewhere here also. Here or Hollywood Center. Somewhere it is given. Some it is kept. One monkey, both eyes closed. Second monkey, both the ears closed. And the third monkey, mouth closed. The message is, don't look at evil things. Don't listen to evil things. And don't speak evil things. Very good message the three monkeys of Gandhi are giving. One of our Swamiji's went to Switzerland by this, for preaching Vedanta, by the side of a lake, he saw an image of three monkeys, but very strange. One of the monkeys was having one eye closed, one open. <laughs> Second monkey, one ear closed, one open. And third monkey, half both was half open. He was amazed, what is the meaning of this? This What is the message these three monkeys are giving? So he started thinking, suddenly he remembered a shloka from the Vedas, he got the meaning. Badram karne bhi shunuyam deva, badram pashe makshabiri jatra, sire rangais to stuagam sastanu bihi, vashema deva hitayada yu, sustina indro vritashava, sustina pusha vishaveda, sustina stak shorish nemi, sustino brias patir dadatu, badram karne bhi shunuyam deva. One ear is closed, don't listen to bad things. One ear is open, but listen to good things. <laughs> Auspicious things you must listen. One eye is closed. Don't look at evil things. But one eye is open. But look towards auspicious things. Good things. Yes, you look. Half mouth is closed. Don't criticize others. But half mouth is open. But have a word of appreciation for others. It's given in our scriptures. It's told. Beautiful thing they have told. Satyam bruyat. You must speak the truth. But second thing is added. Priyam Bruyat. You must also speak the truth in a sweet way. Many people say, I believe in truth. I don't make any compromise. And they give, an, give a very harsh language. Yes, you are following the truth. You are telling the truth, but in a bitter way. And that spoils the relationship. So what is the, what is the formula? Satyam Bruyat. Priyam Bruyat. Apriyam Satyam Ma Bruyat. Have a sweet way of telling the truth then the bitter truth may become a sweet truth. And if you tell the truth in a bitter way, 
spoils the relationship. So these are all certain equations I have given. B, C is communication is very important. You know, most of the relationships are, are hampered because of lack of communication. Let there be as much communication as possible. Husband and wife, no communication. Our science and technology is working very much <laughs> and we are instantly connected. It's a global village. Okay? Through internet, through ISD, you can talk to your friends who are thousands of kilometers away. But the paradox is, the paradox is that you don't have any communication with your wife sitting on the same sofa <laughs> from last six months. From last, no communication. A husband told his wife, you know, tomorrow I have to catch a flight morning 8 o'clock. So get me up at 6 o'clock. He wrote a piece of paper and put down the sleep. Next day he found he got up at 8 o'clock and he was very much annoyed. He wrote a sleep of paper. Why did you get me up? I have, I have, I have missed my flight. Then the wife wrote down, please see the sleep on the, on the back of your cover, on the back of your pillow, already written. So she wrote, at 5 a.m., please get up. <laughs> no communication between husband and wife. So that is why communication is very important. The more we communicate, the better will be our relationship. Disciplining is very much important. Discipline, devotion. E is EQ, emotional intelligence. F, most important, forget and forgive. So many times, you know, we just go on remembering so many years ago, this is what happened. A person filed a suit in the court and then the case started. It was open. What is the matter? He said, this fellow, he told me, you are a rhinoceros. When did he say? Five years back. And you are filing the case today. Well, today only I saw that animal in the zoo. <laughs> and then I to know what he was trying to tell me. <laughs> so five years back he has told something and today you are affected. Forget and forgive. Otherwise we cannot develop relationship. Yes, mistakes are made. Sometimes there is a slip of tongue. Just acknowledge. Try to get pardon. Oh, I am excused. Please excuse me. I am very sorry. Please pardon me. And close the chapter. If we go on remembering one or two bad things that my husband or my wife or my mother or my father or my children have told, go on remembering those things, spoils the relationship, spoils the whole life, makes our life bitter. If we want to sweeten our life, Satyam Bruyat, Priyam Bruyat, let us forget and forgive. So I, there are so many other things, the management of money and management of uh, health and management of death and management of so many other things are there. But anyway, I have given some sort of just an introduction to the subject. You uh, get into the website and try to download those uh, articles. There are many other articles and CDs from where you will be able to get the things. I am extremely grateful to Rivet Swami Swahanaji Maharaj for giving me this opportunity of seeing this beautiful place, wonderful place, full of serenity and, uh, of, and uh, giving the opportunity of meeting you all this evening. And also I am grateful to Swami Sarvadevananji and all the respected nuns for giving the opportunity of meeting you all. And I, at the end I pray at the feet of Sri Ramakrishna, Sharada Devi and Swami Vivekananda, the holy trio sitting here, that uh, they may shower their blessings on us so that we may follow their teachings in our life. In fact, Holy Mother's life is the most beautiful life and the best way of represent and, and the best way we can get the management of everyday life. Just see, just read the life of Sharda Devi. How the whole day management of life can be done. The best demonstration is given by Sharda Devi. Of course, Sri Ramakrishna has given the theory. Swami Vivekanan has given the explanation how to manage everyday life. He has given commentary in the form of how to practice four yogas. But demonstration model is Sharda Devi. She has demonstrated, not only spoken, but through her own life she has demonstrated how to manage everyday life with minimum of money. Now we are not able to manage our family with lot of money. There is recession and so many cry, so much of you and cry, oh we are not able to manage and our income has gone down and we are, no, we are not able to manage because we have got only a house with only two rooms. But Sharda Devi, she lived 
in a room five feet by six feet by seven feet and six feet high and the door was four feet high. That was the Naubat Khana in Dakshineshwar. She lived for so many years. She never complained. And that, that small room was the living room, the drawing, drawing room and living room of Sarda Devi, and bedroom of Sarda Devi, kitchen of Sarda Devi, dining hall of Sarda Devi, guest room of Sarda Devi. Other girls and other women devotees also would sleep with her. And she could not stress herself. She had a, she had, she had a good height. She could not stress herself fully. And yet she never complained. When I was in Rajkot, a lady came to me. I want to commit suicide. Huh? Why? Why you want to commit suicide? Oh, I have been telling my husband to give you, give me the new house. For six months I have been pleading, but he is not uh, giving me the new house. And so I want to commit suicide. I said, are you in a rented house? No, it's our own house, but it's an old-fashioned house, you know. And only six rooms. And I am not able to show my face to my other colleagues. They are all members of Rotary Club, this and that. And I am not able to invite them to my house, old-fashioned house, only six rooms. Then I said, since how long you are contemplating suicide? From last one month. Can you wait for one more day? Can you wait for one more day? Then I tell you, I have got many books, how to commit suicide. <laughs> <laughs> one more day, wait. And then I gave the life of Sharda Devi. She is still alive. <laughs> I said Sharda Devi had only one small room and there she lived. And she said, I don't know. They say that there is, we have suffering in my life and we don't have peace of mind. I never realized what is lack of peace of mind. See, her mind is so full. She said, I, was, I felt as if the, a picture of joy and bliss was always in my heart. And lastly, the last message that she gave, so important for us to have peace of mind and to manage our daily life, if you really want to manage our daily life properly, if you really want to have peace, Sarada Devi has given a beautiful golden formula. If you want peace of mind, do not look at the faults of others. If, but then we want, we enjoy looking at the fault of others. So Sarada Devi says second sentence. And if you really want to look at the faults, then try to look at your own faults. <laughs> Inside your mind, you will get so many faults that you will not have any time to look for the others' faults. So if you want peace of mind, do not look at others' faults. Try to look upon your own faults. No one is a stranger in this world. The whole world belongs to you. In this age of globalization, Sharda Devi's message is most important. But that message is not the book. message that she spoke. Her whole life is a demonstration of this message that she has given. She never looked at anybody's fault. She said, I am the mother of the wicked as I am the mother of the virtuous. And Amjad was a Muslim decoy. She said, Amjad is as much my son as Sarat. Sarat means Swami Shardhananji, the general secretary of Ramakrishna Mission, and Amjad, the Muslim decoy. For mother's eye and mother's eye, both were same. So, Holy Mother Shardhadi never looked at others' fault. And she demonstrated this message of, in this age of globalization, when we want, she said, whole world is your own. Even the decoy whom she met in the forest, just she said, Baba, Father, I am your daughter. And the heart of that decoy was transformed. So this is the message that we receive from Sri Ramakrishna Sadavi Swami Vivekananda in their lives and teachings. This is nothing but the reflection of the message of Vedanta, of holistic universe. The whole world is permeated by the same supreme consciousness. This has been verified by the modern quantum mechanics. Isha vasamidam sarvam yatkincha jagatyam jagat tena taktena bhunjita magrata kasya siddhanam. That has been verified by the modern quantum mechanics. It has been told by, it has been in the lives and teachings of Sri Ramakrishna, Sharada and Swami Vivekananda, we get the same message of this holistic Vedanta, which is very much needed. And Holy Mother Sharada Devi is a demonstration model how to manage everyday life with the minimum money, how can we get more of happiness without, in the present circumstances, wherever we are, how to derive happiness and peace and fulfill and have a fulfillment of our life and achieve the purpose of our life for which we are born. This is the very beautiful demonstration by the life of Sharada Devi. So, at the end, I pray at the feet of Sri Ramakrishna, Maha Sharada Devi and Swami Vivekananda to, to, to shower their blessings on all of us so that we may be able to follow their teachings and make and full, make, have fulfillment in our human birth for which we are born. Thank you very much. Om Shanti Shanti.